Folks, welcome back. We have another Drama Quest episode here. This is a big one, not part of our original uh, plan for our, our upcoming schedule this week. But nevertheless, I think it'll be good. We're, we're here today to do an expose of sorts on the old, uh, I want to say 2021 plat dupe on Mischief. It was the big one, uh, in my opinion. Had far-reaching effects on the economy of the server that persist today. Uh, for like, you know, right now it's almost like 2 million plat to get a chrono on mischief. And it was, you know, in the millions and stuff, uh, various points throughout the life cycle of the server when it would normally be like thousands of platinum. And we're going to dive into like almost, almost every single nitty gritty detail about that whole thing uh, today. I hope we are joined by Swinag. We'll have him introduce himself. Some of you will recognize the name because he's notorious in the EQ community. Um, but before we do that, first, my my sponsors here at patreon i've got a lot of people to thank today because it's been a while since i actually recorded my previous episodes were back catalog for a while uh, while i was recovering from surgery so today i need to thank uh, a lot of folks here we go ominous thank you so much mike eric john schnell big schnell what's up man jordan tony fix thank you fix joseph ike good old pirate ike chris porpy Justin, Recoral, Paul, and Raven Beauty. Thank you all so much for backing in the last couple of days. Um, you guys have been amazing. Your support and everyone else's support helps me stay committed to this, helps keep me on track because I wake up every morning. I'm like, I don't want to record a podcast today. I just want to eat pizza and be fat. And then I'm like, well, there's a bunch of people who are like, who are supporting the Patreon and I like literally, literally owe them. So I need to get up and do this. So here we are. So thank you all so much. Uh, but with that said, Swinig, I'm going to pass it to you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Hey, y'all. I'm in an un undisclosed area uh, <laughs> somewhere in the United States, so uh, Dark Paw doesn't get me. No, I'm kidding. I'm in North yeah. Carolina. Hey, my name is Swinig. Real name is Gabe. I'm pretty open kimono about a lot of things. I've been around the community for a while. Uh, I've been playing EverQuest since um, technically Kunark launch. Uh, I was in the Marines at the time and uh, was in a nerdy job and all the rest of the nerds were playing this new cool game called everquest i was like oh that's neat uh and so i was like all right well you know like i, I want to wait till like the the next sequel and i'll buy it then and, and that was kunark right but it didn't quite understand expansions and everything so once i understood that it, it became a thing I, I played it on and off for what we're at decades now yeah yeah 25 years decades. approaching <laughs> yeah crazy yeah um Kind of got into the guild rating scene um, way way back when. Uh, I was over in Japan. And so what I would do is I would wake up at like 2 a.m., uh, join the Euros, uh, you know, rate right a little while. I was in, let's see, Mortalis uh, back then. I think we were like the third guild to clear VT, so kind of a big thing at the time. Uh, moved back stateside, started hanging out in Uber Guilds IRC, where all the FOH people were. Started kind of uh, becoming a, a name that would at least, you know, interact with uh, some of the big people. Eventually got to the point that I just kind of took over the, the forum, and that's a whole huge story all in and of itself, probably EverQuest-related, but just uh, life-related as well. Finally, just uh, walked away from that. I played on many TLPs. Uh, with Zaid, against Zaid, uh, all kinds of craziness uh, and yep. drama that, uh, man, I feel like a high schooler sometimes, uh, some of that bullshit. But uh, luckily, I put it all behind me. Uh, I've kicked the EverQuest habit. I was playing Warframe recently. I mean, that's a dumb game, but, you know, nice. hey, you know I'm in my 40s. You know, I, maybe it's time to hang it up. But I figured, you know, hey, let's let's give the real story. Uh talked to a lot of people during this whole thing and and gave them parts of the story uh i don't feel like i ever really fully lied but you know didn't want to expose everything right uh, but, but now hey eh, it's over let's give so it a shot you um you basically during the time of cello we just did our cello episodes with frank the bank and i, I think yeah, you saw great. them um, during the time of that you were the owner at that time of fireswithheaven.org right yeah, yeah. Which, I've taken over. Um, the previous owner had sold us to MMORPG.com for, mm -hmm. um, I think the NDA has expired, $35,000. Yeah. That's how much money he got. That was uh, when it was briefly called Rerolled, right? 
Yep, yep, yep. We went with that. It was the dumbest name ever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, this So this goes all the way back to FOHGuild.com, like from the news days with uh, Furrer and uh, what's – I can't remember his name now. The other guy that would do uh, – The one that ran things or just – Yeah, he, he would do a lot of the news post updates and stuff. Oh, I think Krugen was doing a lot of that. Um, yeah, Krugen was there. Day. Yep. I mean, I, I play with Krugen too. Um, but, but yeah, so I mean, it's a kind of a legacy of hardcore guilds and everything. And when you became the owner, um, you became sort of like a fulcrum like uh, of – people wanting to give you secret knowledge to like curry favor or impress you. You like when, when yeah. you're at the top of a pyramid, people just come to you with shit all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, just kind of, you know, I've been in pretty open about what I did, you know, tech it, so, you know, now I, I worked for a big cybersecurity company. So it's always been kind of on the edge and, you know, you have people that just think like, Oh, you know, if I tell you this, I'll still remember, you know, 98, or something back on IRC. Uh, I was in, the, you know, this hacker freak channel. And this guy was like, Hey man, you know, you want this FBI shell? I was like, no dude, I don't want none of that. You know, like, right. like why are you bringing this to me? Oh, well, you know, I've seen you talk a lot. You know, that's just something I would bring to the table often where it's just like, I'd be on the fringes of things. People would bring me a thing. and I'd be like, Oh, oh okay. That's cool. Well, let's see what we can do with it. Yeah. So, uh, in this community, FOH was a decent enough name. Yeah, definitely was. Um, now, for for those of you who don't know what the FOH forums are, we recommend probably that you do not go there. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> over the years, it has become like an increasingly shadier place, I would say. I, I yeah. still post there, but I stick strictly to the EverQuest sections. And if you venture outside of that, you do so at your, at your own risk. Um, but when Mischief came out, you had already relinquished foh right you walked away from the forum yeah 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 i definitely had walked away from that it had gone a, a a little bit high into the right uh and a little odd and i was like you know what hey i'm for the community and so i want the community to still own it so i'm not going to be that dick that you know tries to sell us for 35 grand or more you know yeah i relinquish it back over to the community and let them let them run with it right i think yeah. some people still hate me just because you know, I made some comments about why I left, you know, and what things I didn't like. And they're like, oh, well, you're just a stupid, you know, left wing cuck. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm pretty damn conservative. You know, it's just yeah. some things I don't like, you know, with the way that we're going. So, right. Um, but yeah, I, when there's like a spotlight, understand. Yeah, when there's a spotlight on you, no matter how small it is, there's people who will hate you. Like there's people who. Oh, for sure. Who like are I, I was like in a discord um, for Pantheon. There's people who were like talking about not liking me. And I was like, I don't even know who these people are. Like, how do they not like it? Yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? You just can't even <laughs> you can't even give it any yeah. thought. Um, yeah. So I forget, honestly, were you and I back on good terms? Because there was a period of time where you swapped sides early in Cello and you and I weren't best friends anymore for mischief. <laughs> were we back on good terms in the beginning? Um, I think that I, you know, and part of this was uh looking back uh bringing in all the branch you know like hey this is a new thing this is what's going on would you like some plat um mm. you know uh, and just kind of being like yeah i was kind of a cello was an interesting time yeah uh, i made a lot of just decisions i'm not even sure good bad or or all bad you know but it's just it was dumb and i don't know what i was involved with and why <laughs> so you know this probably was on the grand scheme of things, there are very, very few people that I don't actually dis that I actually dislike, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. maintain that in any kind of I just I just don't care. Right. You know, I either am apathetic to a person or yeah, that's probably a fine person, right? right. Um Yeah, you like dislike people no. when you're playing against them the way you dislike the guy on the other football team. You know what I mean? Right. And then when like the I game's over broadly. or the season's over, yeah. you're just like, you're cool. Yeah. And, and that was a time frame, and I was doing some things. Um, I probably disliked more people uh, in Amtrak than I did in Faceless. But, you know, it was true part of every the process. Amtrak member. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, we were, I was doing a thing, right? You know, I was yeah. trying to, you know, A, I was trying to clean up that guild and I was trying to, you know, do some leading stuff, right? And then I realized I suck at EQ. You know, like I was actually never any good at the game. Um, so yeah, it's just lots of revelations happen when, when you do weird, 
rule sets and TLPs and you have drama and stuff that you realize, eh, eh, maybe this doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. So let's bring it, bring it to mischief here fully. We, we find ourselves on mischief. We are currently in the guild called Faceless X in Virtue, the, the biggest uh, GDKP guild, which is a guild that instead of using dragon kill points, DKP, they use platinum, just raw platinum or chrono as your currency for buying raid loot. And then everyone gets a split, you know, basically at, imagine this in, in, a, in a nutshell, you go to a raid, you kill Nagafin, you bid things for raw platinum that he drops. And after all the drops have been sold, you split all the platinum there with the people who attended the raid. That's that's in a nutshell what GDKP is. There's some nuance there that we don't need to get into. But we had a guild that was run on platinum. And it was on the mm-hmm. it was the biggest guild to ever do it in EverQuest with like 500 members active. And it was on the most popular EverQuest TLP ever. And then you came in with the plat dupe. I remember from my perspective was one day you were like, what would you do if you had infinite platinum? And I just thought you were like bullshitting with me. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know, bro. I guess I would buy like the, the paladin haste belt from sky. I forget exactly what I said. Yeah. But yeah, then I realized minor. that you, you were like being serious about it. And I was like, you were like, could you, could you like keep it quiet if I gave you like, like a million plat? And I was like, I, I guess so. And then you straight <laughs> up handed me, I think, this had to be what, like five or six weeks into the server, like fresh into yeah. Kunark. Uh, we had a one month classic in, in, classic period. This is fresh into Kunark. I had actually just split off of Faceless X and Virtue to form the Faceless, and we were starting a, a rivalry there. And then you handed me like 10 million plat, and I was like, fuck, I just left the GDKP guild. You know what I mean? But yeah. it was <laughs> astounding. So, yeah. what happened to you before that? How. Tell tell us all, you know, tell us about the plat tube. How did it happen? Where did it come from? Go. All right. This is going to be fun. All right. So I was, uh, let's see. I don't remember what TOPs were after Cello, um, but none of them really interested me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go play live, right? I'm going to see how this, this world works. I was like, I never, shockingly, I'd never done macro quest. Uh, I'd done show EQ back in the day. Back when it was hard, you had to run Linux, you know, you had to have a hub uh, that would just broadcast to all the ports, all these little intricacies, right? And show EQ used to be difficult. Uh, and that was neat to me. So, you know, I, I played around with that a lot. But Macro Quest, I was like, eh, I'm only playing one character. Uh, it's easy, right? You know, lots of the time I was a cleric and I was pressing, you know, one or two hotkeys for, you know, complete heal chains and stuff like that, right? So I was like, let me, let me go to life. So uh, I'd met a guy on Agnar called Snoop. Mm-hmm. Snoop is notorious. The guy is a, a hustler, a seller. The guy will scalp your mom and then sell yeah. it, you know, whatever it takes, right? Uh, to make a buck. Um, interesting guy. Hung out with him. You know, I was like, hey, I'm going to move over to FE. Uh, I'm going to start a six box. He's like, oh, yeah, I can help you. So he kind of showed me the ropes, showed me MQ um, and everything else. I kind of, you know, hung out in those groups. This was probably around the time that I contacted Holly and was like, hey, let's let's have some chats, you know. So, you know, went out to, you know, I grew up in San Diego, but I flew out there because I'm, you know, living on the other coast now. Uh, you know, we had a conversation you know, about a lot of different things. And, and then we had this um now, at that time that you had that conversation, was, was that ostensibly with you being the representative from FOH? It was, I can facilitate um, probably a conversation. Um, mm. And I'd like to in kind of, uh, not quite payment, but I'd also like to get, you know, that kind of running back again where there's some back and forth between yeah. you guys and the community as a whole. Yeah, FOH well, was... Not the only community, but right. What people don't realize about Holly, sorry to interrupt here, by the way, is no worries. The, the critical thing that's different about Holly Longdale when she was in charge of EverQuest is there's never been a producer before or since that has been more open to just picking up the phone for like random ass dudes that are playing EQ or answering the email. You know, like she would actually like log into her email and respond to like a ton of stuff, you know what I mean? And she would set up that kind of conversation and she would come talk to EQ mule or, you know what I mean? She, she would listen to thoughts on like what the next server should be. She directly engaged with the community and it was crazy in in a way that I've never seen before or since. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, like some people might hear that and be like, that's, there's no way that you just went over to San Diego and I'm like with Holly, I could definitely see it. 
Yeah, it was Holly, Absor, and J Chan. Uh, yeah. You know, we all had, you know, we had lunch there at a claim jumper. It was great. Uh, no, it's terrible. But, um, you know, and and we talked about TLPs a lot and, and they didn't understand some of the things. They're like, what's this sleeper thing? Why is everybody up in arms about it? You know, why is this a big deal? That's it's crazy. Like, well, <laughs> it's crazy. They didn't understand that. You know what I mean? That, that they were like that out of bit. touch. Yeah, they didn't understand seventh at all. I was like, hey, really? You guys need to figure this out, you know, with the veteran rewards. Uh, they're like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not like it really kind of shifts everything. I was like, on TLPs, you know, it, it, on the gray market, you, you'll spend a couple hundred extra bucks to get something that's got seven so you could be viable. It's defining. Yeah, it defines the meta at yeah. that time. And GOD, like if, if you were a DPS, DPS racing with no seventh, you just weren't there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It, you were irrelevant. You were just yeah. a bottom of the parse. Didn't matter. So, you know, I, I will say this. I brought some good to the game as we're going to talk about how much bad I did to the game. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that, yeah, I got veteran rewards moved to all accounts. I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> uh, AOCs, uh, I got pushed to, you know, all servers, which is amazing. Uh, and this is probably not that great, but, uh, uh, Rizlona, I just kind of helped phrase that into a, a thing, right? And then mm. I, I think they just did a terrible job of it, so it just made it uh, move. Um, Were you part of on this, mischief? There was a big, uh, what's up? there was a big online chat that leaked with Holly, right, where people were talking about what the next TLP should be. Yeah. In. And then there was a second one where she talked to EQ Mule. Were you? Did you facilitate those two things? I facilitated the first chat uh, that you just referenced, you know, the, the multiple different guilds. And mm -hmm. uh, I was the guy that leaked it because mm. <laughs> I was like, yeah, hey, nobody's actually nobody believes that they're going to have this conversation. Nobody yeah. believes that Holly is open, you know, to MQ within the right limits. Right. Uh, right. So let's just toss it out there and let's see what people say after that. Let's start the conversation. You know, yeah. let's make it to where everybody can be a part of it because I didn't pick the, the perfect people for the conversation. I picked who I knew could have the conversation, but right. I didn't know everybody. Right. Yeah. Oh, and um, we should say really quick, cause we keep saying, EQ, I keep saying EQ mule, EQ mule, um, not the original developer, but for a long time, he was the macro quest kingpin MQ, of course, being macro quest, which is a hacking, basically a hacking software for EverQuest to cheat. And MQ was for a long time, I think this is correct, run by EQ mule, at least the, the yeah. big mainstream version that you could just download easily as an idiot and use. Is that correct? Yeah, he was, yeah, he was definitely the front man for it. Um, it, by the time I was involved, um, he was not doing a significant amount of development. Um, right. He's just sitting on the laurels of, of the old stuff, yeah. right? And then he yeah. has since then been deposed. He's like kicked <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. 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 He has his own compile. It's different. Uh, I don't know anything. I, I can't say if it's better or worse, but I, I think it's significantly worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, well, we all get old, right? <laughs> right. So yeah, right, so, so you know, on, yeah. went over, yeah, I went over to FV, uh, did the whole six box MQ thing, uh, and it was his own mini game, right? You know, you've talked a lot about cheating, a lot about MQ, right? And, then, and I agree with a ton of what you're talking about, right? Because mm -hmm. um, it's a whole different game. Um, I'm no longer playing a community game at that point. I'm playing a, uh, a Factorio inside of EverQuest, right? Yeah. I'm optimizing my gameplay loops. I'm, I'm, you know, trying to figure out how to, you know, macro this or, or automate that. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do a mission completely without any kind of user input. And it's a different challenge and it's interesting, right? So you uh, can that's what fully I was script a six, a six man group to do like live era group content missions. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Or, or go back and do the old stuff, right? And I yep. think a lot of people aren't doing the old stuff because uh, in the macro quest community, TLPs are frowned on. Mm -hmm. uh, people are still under this impression that there's a there's a truce between DPG and them, that as long as they don't muck with uh, TLPs where they make the big money, then they won't get messed with. It's, yep. all, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all a lie. You know, there's no understanding. There's no nothing, right? They could do whatever they want on TLP. They're being gentlemen about it. And hey, if that's what they want to do, that's totally fine. 
Well, let um, me tell you, nowadays, on the last two TLP servers, it's just become Wild West again. At least that's how it felt from my perspective. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's 10 lines of code you have to put in. That's it. Yeah. And then you you compile it, uh, and, and you're up and running. <laughs> so it's not hard, right? Um, and it's open source, you know, like that for a reason. Hey, if you want to do whatever you want to do, but our community won't do it, right? That same community doesn't do warps or, you know, any of the other active hacks, right? But hmm. they're just one so, out of many communities, right? W- yeah. Where are the things like warps and stuff? Where's that coming from? Um, MMO bugs and other groups that compile all that. Yeah. That's just so. a different branch of macro quest, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's multiple different ones out there. And there's a lot of homebrew stuff, right? That who knows what it can do, Um, Hmm. you know. So it's just kind of a, uh, since it's open source, people could do some really malicious things. The vast majority of people, hey, you know, they don't know how to compile. They don't know how to write their own code. Uh, You know, they don't know how to hook into it and make it do the crazy things, right? Yeah. That's what's slowing things down. Not because any kind of rules or agreements or whatever. It's just, there's not enough people out there that really know what they're doing. Right. Um, or it'd be a lot more blatant and the game would uh, shadow bang. Uh, did you ever play that one? I did. MMO? No. So there was, uh, if you grab this different EXE, there was a GM one. That's all you needed. Uh, and then you could have all GM commands available too. So, that went rampant, right? And so the game failed within like a couple months of launch. Mm. It was supposed to be the next big MMO killer, PvP focus, you know, before that became really a thing, like with, you know, Arc Age or, you know, Guild Wars or the rest of them, right? And just because of one EXE, the whole thing just plummeted, failed, and they never got their user base back, right? Um, so, yeah. EverQuest could be just like that. It's just that there's not enough coders out there that can do the really nefarious stuff that are try- that are sharing it, right? Right. So, yeah. But anyway, so joining that community, uh, you know, I, I still have my name, you know, and people think at least that, you know, uh, I'm a big deal or, or something. I get stuff handed to me. One of them was same question I proposed to you because I found it kind of a neat question of what would you do with unlimited plat? You know, so and, someone and came I up to this, you and, and posed that same question to you. Yep, yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I was like, well, that that's interesting. Same exact concept as you. I was like, well, I'm an FB. I was like, yeah, I'd probably buy all the collectibles because those are a pain in the dick to to run around and look for. So, you know, then I can get those achievements for free. <laughs> He's like, well, that's it? I was like, well, how unlimited are we talking? And he's like, right. literally <laughs> unlimited. And I was like, come on, man. That's, that's not possible. Uh, and it was. So he kind of explained some of the tech behind it. It didn't make sense to me. Basically, it's somewhere in the data stream, somewhere in the packets, um, plat, all, all currency like that can't be tracked. Uh, and the reason why, um, and you know, this is secondhand, right? I understand what he's talking about, but I'm not going to present it as a hundred thousand percent fact because I, I can't tell you, you know, the bits and, and everything why, right? But understanding how it works, it makes a ton of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, if they logged every plat generated, their log files, you know, and all the rest of that stuff would be monstrosis, P- petabytes of data ridiculous right. amounts of data just for currency. Well, right? it makes sense because uh, remember a couple of years ago, they had to change the way uh, repost worked for warrior, like furious discs mm-hmm. and stuff like that, because it was creating too much server lag. Yeah. And they actually yeah. nerfed that whole mechanic ever so slightly so that it would generate f- fewer, fewer interactions between the, the player character and the NPCs and thus fewer right. logs. I think that's what happened. So it makes sense that they don't have that logging capability because it would just be too burdensome on the scale of the whole enterprise of the game. Exactly. It's, it, it'd be a ridiculous amount, right? Chrono, yeah, they log that. Easier to do, more important to do, right? But yeah. they don't log plat. So this guy said that uh, every so often in the packet stream, uh, there's a bit here and there that he can toggle uh, and he can take one copper and turn it to an unlimited amount of plat. I was like, all right, you're going to have to teach me this. He's like, hell no, I'm not teaching that. You know, I was like, all right, all right, all right. Here's my account. You know, we, we've we known each other for a while. I, you know, gave him a burner. Uh, I was like, fill it with plat. 
uh, or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's like, hey, I, you know, I play on FV, um, you know, t- toss it on there. So he's like, all right, it's done. Uh, so I log in and I have 2 billion plat on my character. So I was like, oh, all right, let me see if this just disappears when I touch it. Well, not not thinking about it. You know, I click it uh, and it I just crashed the desktop. Right. Now, when um, you have 2 billion plat, the zeros are going over the UI element. You know what I mean, right? Can't like, even see them. Yeah, can't even, it's, can't even it, see them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. And the number is too large for the game because it was 32 bits still. Mm-hmm. Uh, too large for the game to handle. And so it just crashes when you touch it. I tried doing a split. I tried doing, you know, going to a vendor, buying the most expensive thing, you know, and then maybe I can trim it down. No. If the game interacts with 2 billion and plat, it crashes. It doesn't, and- it can't handle it. Do you think it would work now as a 64-bit game? Very possibly it wouldn't crash. Um, but, and I'll go into this a little bit, uh, I'm really curious if they're now logging um, things of that increased uh, size or not. You mean I like at a certain not. movement level they're they're checking? Because they there was recently, yeah. uh, you, you knew about the trade skill dupe that came out. Yeah, it did fairly yeah. recently, and they're like, "Oh, we, you know, we have assessed there's this much plat on each of these servers, and it was increased by this much due to the trade skill tube, so it's not a big deal." Even though like fresh economies were really <laughs> harmed by it, yeah. Um, so that implied that, that, they had that was some said method. out loud, yeah, yeah. But uh, and, but that's you know you also admit, three, you know. three four years after what you did or three years, yeah, 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 yeah. and on a sixty four bit client, right? So who, right. so who knows? Um, by the way, I think with the 64-bit client, this specific dupe is no longer ever going to be possible. Doesn't really? Mean there's not other ones. But uh, hmm. the data stream has changed significantly enough. Now, whether or not they did things on purpose uh, to do that, or it's just the nature of the code, right, um, that it can't be done. This one. Other hmm. other options, right? You know, we see it all the time, little uh, hacks and, and, and this or that. Um, and it might also be uh, the same concept that because uh, there was an item dupe uh, on mischief as well. Right. Uh, I wanted to bring. I was going to bring that up w- once we get through this part. Okay. Yeah. 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 So so there I have two billion. I was like, dude, you got to you, like you broke the account. He's like, uh, oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. So he goes on. He does some magic and he deletes you know down to five hundred million. Uh, that's perfectly fine. You know. So. I go nuts. I'm like, why don't we buy Chrono? Uh, and, you know, Chrono's pretty expensive on FE. I think it was maybe 10 million at the time. So it's like 50 Chrono, not, not too big of a deal. I was like, right. wait a second. Didn't we have a, have a TLP start pretty recently? I was like, let's do this on Mischief and Thornblade. Chrono's like 500 so he, plat on Mischief at that point. Exactly. You yeah. know, just take 500 million. It's, it's a near unlimited amount of Chrono, right? Yeah. So, you know, kind of like ex- fast forward a little bit as in, you know, so like we set it up. Um, what was the list I gave you? We did Mischief, Thornblade. Airdune. Uh, Airdune. Uh, and Airdune um, was a test, you know, because I didn't want to do too much on there. Um, and Mangler. And then I yeah. had a ton on FE, right? Um, yeah, I got it. You had uh, 500 million on Mischief, 150 million on Thornblade, 100 million on Mangler, 200 million on Airdune. And then you you said you personally dropped five hundred mil just yourself on Fronavai. Oh yeah, yeah. And and and, and we we re upped you know some of those. I don't remember how much we we re upped on any of those. Air doing a mangler. Uh, it was tedious. Um, Population was because, much smaller on on mangler. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you had the bazaar. So basically, all we do is every so often we wipe out the bazaar, and mm-hmm. then you know that's all we did. Yeah. Um, not often, uh, though on FV, uh, you know, I bought myself all kinds of, I bought myself a BFG. I was like, man, I never had a BFG. That sounds neat. Yeah. I bought one that account got banned, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the little things. Right. So, so what we do is, you know, we, we set this up, you know, uh, uh, level one characters, um, just a chrono to start the account. Um, and then we put, you know, a few hundred mil and I go sit in, in the tunnel in Conwell lands. This was during like, you know, COVID, you know, and everything else like that. There'd been a car accident recently. So 
work was like, yeah, you just sit at home and you just like, you, you survive. Right. And you'd mm-hmm. be on call, you know, it's like anything breaks and you know, you can walk us through over the phone. So I just slung chrono all day long, every day. And I just, you know, when, when, when the market would dry up in the tunnel, I'd switch over to thorn blade, do the same thing. I'd wait till I saw people selling to kind of trim it down a bit rather than advertising and same prices. But I'd, I'd make jokes every so often memes, right? I'd be like, Hey, paying, you know, 10, 10 X, you know, what everyone else is doing. You know, somebody would send me a tell. Like, hey man, that's a joke. I'm not really paying 10x, but I'll pay 50 plat more. You know, stuff like that, right? You know, right. just just to get them to send a tell. And they're like, oh yeah, there's a plat because you know that dude is like always saying he's gonna buy a 10x. And you know, then I'd post. I was like, well, did you ever send me a tell? Because no way I'm paying 10x, but I'll pay you 50 plat more. And they'd be like, oh okay, well I would have done that. You know, yep. so I was getting a decent amount just you know from doing that. But without the bizarre, it was just tedious it was a struggle but in comes snoop so i was like hey i gotta offload this i got i don't know the chrono selling market very well um i can hop on the ec tunnel you know the website uh, i don't want to advertise for that sorry but you know i can top onto this side or that site you know and sell it but uh i want to do this in bulk yeah. you know it's too much work well he knows all the bulk guys he is a bulk guy you know and so Next thing you know, uh, I'm just giving him all the chrono, uh, and he's just flipping it out there, yeah, you know, as fast as possible. So basically, you uh, had even, a hookup, and then you you flipped it with a distributor. You know what I mean? And and this is yep. the the, th- the three principal parties. You have the the hacker, the unnamed hacker. Yep. You've got you, pretty much the CEO, and then your your distributor, your wholesaler, Snoop. Yeah, just yeah. like any other company, we're just flipping chrono, right? And really quick. I I looked up some some data points while we were talking here. Mischief launched on May 26th, and you sent me the screenshot with 550 million platinum on Mischief June 29th. So about 34 days yeah. after the server launched. My first sale was June 30th. Yeah, I sold $240 worth of Chrono. Uh, oh, that whole day I sold $900 worth of Chrono. That's you moving the chrono uh-huh. after you bought it. You know what I mean, right? So yeah. you, and the other thing is you you crashed. You guys started to crash the chrono market. It started going like normally chrono is like right. twelve to ten dollars on black market, and it went all the way down to like seven to eight dollars at one point, right? Yep. But by the time we were done, so um, I moved probably ten thousand plus chrono through my accounts. Wow. Um, through PayPal. Uh, I missed having to report to the IRS by two transactions on, on PayPal. If you do 200 transactions or X amount of money, um, uh, you have to, you know, they'll give you a 1099. You have to report it to the IRS. But now they've uh, lowered it. All... Now it's like $500 and they're, they're crying yeah. about IRS. It's terrible. Yep. Uh, I did all invoices so that it was mm-hmm. all sales tax was paid just in case. So, you know, I probably lost five grand on taxes right you know sales tax <laughs> and 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 that kind of like uh puts it into perspective how much money we made in a year or less right right we did some in crypto but you know that was kind of complicated um you know paying out to all the rest of us is this was a full-time job you know especially with um i don't know if you've worked much with with or, or heard about you know kind of the everquest gray market a lot of sweaty meth heads we'll just we'll we'll just put it that way i would imagine it gets it gets real weird when you start crushing the chrono economy on the third-party websites because there are people you're getting into position where you're in between a a person and their chicken tendies you know what i mean for sure oh yeah people get like violent about it you know what i mean they do yeah so i I imagine you got some threats it was never, never fully a threat, but very much a nonstop, you know, wheeling and dealing over 50 cents, mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, I just, I just can't do that. I'll do, I'll do seven, seven fifty. No, no, man. Like I've got unlimited chrono, you know, I never yeah. say that, but you know, it's like, uh, I, I'm not going to get strong armed, you know, because you can't afford it because yeah, you, you know, you bought a Chalupa today. Right. Yeah. It's 
not, <laughs> I don't care. You right. Know? Um, but it was, you know, and, and our thing was, we were like, well, we'll never sell below seven. Cause after that, you're just giving it away. And I was like, right. I don't care, dude. Snoop, bring it down to six. Crash the market. I don't. It's care. free money. You're just printing it. You're printing real right. currency, basically. Yeah. And and it wasn't because I wanted more money, but I think at a certain point I realized this is ridiculous. I had an account. They got two billion. Nobody logged that. I shared with you and a whole bunch of other people um, at first, and then they all came back wanting more, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And they're like, "Hey, can I get some more of that free plat?" Right. I was like, nah, you know, like, like I'm selling it for, you know, this or whatever, but like I hooked you up. So you should be good for like the life of the server. No. Yeah. And then, then they get mad. Right. Um, you remember Hannah? Yeah. I remember Warrior. Hannah from Agnar. Yeah. Yeah. So he was over with us on Cello over an Amtrak. Well, mm-hmm. he originally st- started with Faceless and then moved over to Amtrak with me. Um, and the, the day after the, the failed VT run. Yeah. Um, and then in time he quit. And yeah. so I was like, Hey man, I'll buy your warrior from you. Cause I was very generous. You know, I've always kind of been, uh, doing well monetarily. And, and if a bro is quitting, uh, you know, and, and not doing well, you know, you need some cash or whatever. I'll, hey, I'll buy your account, you know, and I'll, I'll use it in my stable, you know, whatever. So, you know, yeah. I switched from Paladin, Holy Forge, over to um, his warrior uh, and, and ran that for quite a few expansions as one of our main tanks, right? Um, terrible at it. Terrible. Um, but, you know, like I hooked I hooked a brother up, right? Um, so he's over on Mischief, you know, running with uh, Krim and crew, I think. Uh, and he's like, hey, man, can, we, can I have some of the plat? I was like. No, it's it's kind of been a mess. You know, I really kind of made a mistake. You know, I'm not giving out anymore. Yeah. And, you know, he, he just starts making threats. And, you know, he starts giving me screenshots of how much he's reported me and how he's told this guy and that guy. And they're all reporting. I got mass reported, you know, big time. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I first no talked strikes. about it. Um, I, I just looked it up July 7th. So, like, a week after we first interacted about it. Yeah. on uh on foh i didn't you know i didn't give particulars but remember we were in competition with uh faceless x in virtue aka uh greed is good is what they ended up becoming and they were that they were a plat raid guild and the at that time animosity between the guilds was really strong because we had just split off and in, in an effort to basically harm their interests i i, <laughs> I was like I was like that face when you're getting paid in platinum on a server with an active plat dude. That's all I said. Yep. And everyone went crazy, but a lot of people were like, you're lying. You know what I mean? Like people didn't want to believe me. Yeah. And then basically a guy who's sort of like an RMT kingpin posted on FOH and he was like, yeah, it's active on Thornblade too. And that guy yeah. was hunting you. That guy was like out to get you. I, I, I mean, I hope that I or anything, but I'll leave that to you if you want. If you want to. Oh yeah, I mean, it's pretty public. Uh, Elderan is probably since I haven't been the person to link it. He is the SG botter, right? He Ooh. is the guy that's out there. You know, just every single server uh, doing it, and you know, he spins a narrative, right? The number one thing that I think was super interesting about all of this um, is the narratives. They got spun, yeah. right? The narratives did way more damage than the amount of plat, right? Hmm. You think about it, 100 million on Thornblade. It's not that much right? on the grand scheme of things, right? At the right. time frame, sure, but everything went up in price. Uh, but at a certain point, the plat dupe is everywhere, even though it's nowhere, right? Hey, man, you know, like I was buying, you know, Chrono on on Burtox and like uh, the plat dupe is over there. <laughs> no, it's not. I can tell you for a fact it's not. But the perception was more important. And that really spun the narrative for the economy of the entire game. Now, and are you confident that, that the person who hooked you up with it, the hacker behind everything, are you confident mm-hmm. this person wasn't working with other people on the side? to produce it 100 percent. how confident are you that no other tech wizards out there figured out the same methodology and were able to reproduce it 
2000% on that one. This guy okay. was a next level genius at the time. Okay. Um, I don't know if he's still doing stuff out there, um, but he didn't really care. Right. He was like, Oh, you know, like I, I need a few chrono to, to, you know, run my own accounts. That's how we started. Hey, yeah. we're just screwing around. We're just taking this thing and we're just doing our own thing. Right. We're yeah. just buying stuff off the bazaar for our alts and everything else, but we're not really doing anything with it. And we're like, right. I guess we could sell a few chrono, you know, like, I guess we could, and I that just that got you, out of hand. I know that, you know, this, this person, you know what I mean? And you have a level of trust yeah. with them, but for me, a person who doesn't know them at all. Right. I think about oh, yeah. like, if I teach a dog that if I press, if it pause a button, a bone comes out, it's going to be pressing that fucking button until it, the button doesn't work anymore. Right. And that's what I think. Yeah. about. Like if you found you had a free money button, it's hard to me to imagine a person, not just pressing it, pressing it, pressing it. Like, working with yeah. multiple people and stuff. Um, but so here's one reason yeah. um, why we all quit, right? Cause we could have, we could have kept going on for a decent amount of time. Mm-hmm. Could have done another year or two of it. Um, you know, the 64 bit didn't happen uh, for quite a while after that. It, it, our taxes got complicated. Yeah. You know, our, our personal life got rolled around, you know, flipping chrono to sweaty meth heads. Right. Right. Uh, it was you ended up really... walking away with like almost 100k USD personally, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Close. I don't know. I don't know if you want me to say. You know, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that's fine. You know, DPG is is uh, you know going to be less than thrilled about that. But um, but yeah, you know, and and here's the thing. I don't know that we were walking away with the most um that year out of what other people were doing. Right. It just didn't happen to do with the plat dupe, right? Because I'm not real familiar with as much of the gray market as some of these other people are, right? Because yeah. because people were definitely just selling straight gear, right? Especially when they could dupe gear and they were just selling the high end stuff. I know people you know? who made collectively in the hundred k range as as a small unit they made over 100k in like planes of power on mischief so selling gear not the, you know they were doing um what what you would maybe call honest rmting you know what i mean like yeah no cheats other than whatever cheats they're using to box at a, at a high yeah. level but they weren't like using like dupes or anything and the yeah. economy on mischief was just fucking on fire 24 7 you could sell anything fast always yeah uh, I'd, I'd i'd bet 500 thousand dollars minimum a year just off of mischief and gray market yeah minimum yeah might be a, might be a million uh but it's a it's a decent chunk yeah you know and, and a little, decent amount of that goes through dpg yeah i mean right? chrono is so, chrono is a tax that you pay to dark paw right yeah and it's it, it had to have been bought at one time right so every time i sell one for eight they already got their 15 off of it. Mm-hmm. I'm just washing it a hundred times, you know? Right. Uh, just all these people are just holding on to it just for a minute, yeah. you know? And, and the perception just changed the price on everything, right? So if there's a plat dupe, plat's worthless. I mm-hmm. run my guild on plat. Now all the items get devalued. They didn't change. Items are still exactly the same. Right. The amount of plat was still pretty much the same, you know? Uh, especially if a year later, nothing else was getting injected, right? And accounts yeah. would get banned holding a decent amount. So I think at this point, if you could do a forensic detailed look at mischief, I bet you, you know, and each one of those pieces of plat were like radio tagged, mm-hmm. you wouldn't find a single piece of that plat still. Hmm. Just due to the the spending habits and the ridiculous things that people will do towards the beginning of the server that ends up in bands. Yeah. Now, not enough of them, but some. What I want to look at is like you have 550 million plat, right? Before the market is inflated, like if you were to just drip feed it, you know what I mean? 500 plat per chrono at the at day day 0 of of your plat dupe. 550 million how much real life money is that how many chrono is that right like what's 550 million divided by 500 Uh, obviously a little bit unrealistic but just as a thought experiment yeah yeah that let's see let's do uh 500 it's like uh a million 
basically a million yeah. chrono. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you, if you could have maintained it. If you sold it at like the fair market rate, a third party at $10 a chrono, you're looking at $11 million. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's a lot of but, fucking, but, but it doesn't yeah, work out do anywhere it. like that. No, no, yeah. you can't because the, the narrative gets. So let's say I didn't, I didn't give any to you. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you didn't say anything, uh, mm-hmm. you know, didn't give it to, you know, anybody else. They didn't say anything. Um, because I touched both sides of the aisle on that one. Yeah. You know, uh, I had friends all over. Um, I remember you see, showing think, me a screenshot. You're like, somebody's sharing the screenshot. And I was like, I didn't say, like, I have the screenshot, but I wasn't like the person who was like sharing that shit around that 550 yeah. mil. Like, I think other people had that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I had probably three different people I gave plat to, yep. you know, not a super significant amount uh, with what I had, but you know, a super significant amount that they should have been set for life. Right. Yeah. Um, or at least the next three to five years of, of the server. Yeah. Um, but but not one of them, you know, and and this isn't a complaint, but not one of them kept their mouth shut, you know. Yeah. And 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 they probably you know kept it in a small circle. Yeah. Um. But it's impossible, right? You know, it's, it's all the, all the two classic. People, everyone knows. Yeah. Exactly. And so if I had not have done that, I think it would probably have taken maybe a full month for the Chrono price to go nuts. Mm. And then it just would have been re- the realization of why isn't there any chrono, you know, or, or and why is, you know, Spidey senses would have got triggered. Right. Um, now, and then after like, that, it's a free for all. Greed is good was really smart. They were really smart about it because they caught Snoop. They figured out who was the person. Did. And I think that He's actually obvious. took heat. That, that took heat off you because some people were starting to be like, oh, yeah. it's Swinnig. And I was like, that's not who I, who I heard it was. I was just trying to like <laughs> smoke screen just a little yeah. bit. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, there were some other names that got dragged through the mud. I got messages all the time. Hey, you know, I heard you. I was like, no, that guy's incorruptible. It's not that guy. Yeah. You know, like stuff like that happened. And I was, you know, and then everyone's like, hey, man, I heard you got a dupe. I was like, I don't have a dupe. I do not have a dupe. Yeah. And I'll say that to the you know till the day I die. I don't have a dupe because I yeah. didn't have the dupe. I had the duped stuff. I right. was the supplier. I was Walmart for Chrono, you mm-hmm. know. But I was not the duper, right? Right. And so I tiptoed that line quite often, and, and you know had different things and people that is like, man, I haven't talked to you in like three years, you know. And, and next thing you know, they're sending me messages on Discord. Hey man, I heard you're the duper. Wait, you know, I'm trying. What guild were we? Okay, what server was that? I was like, oh, okay, that's where I remember you from. No, man, I'm not the duper. Yeah, everyone you comes know? back and is like, your best you friend. I was just going to admit it straight to you. you know? Yeah. Like, no, no. But yeah. yeah, they figured it out. They, they figured out that it was Big Nerd. They, I don't think they yeah, knew that he nerd. was the, the character name. So he was the, the, the personality Snoop in the, the RMT yeah. world, but they knew it was Big Nerd. And they actually banned him from using Plat and their bidding, right? Yeah. I think so, that's what happened. He, he had he to use gonna... only Chrono, but, you know. Yeah. He saw a limit of those, right? But, uh, you know, he, he was going to double dip, you know, like I'm going to sell the items as well, you know? Uh, yeah. And um, like I can't stress, you know, Snoop and I, we did a lot of things, but that guy, that guy talks um, mm-hmm. and he talked to a lot of people, um, a lot of shady people that just wanted in on the action, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know what he did or didn't do, but I know for sure what he wanted to do was do his own small group and then, you know, profit off of that. Right. You know, like use this as seed money to level up and gear up. And then, you know, he, he does, you know, cause he does, you know, 54 man raids on FV just by himself, you know, mm-hmm. just all completely automated bots. Right. And so, you know, hey, if I can bring that to mischief, I can be selling even more. And I'm only just taking a little bit of profit off. And it just, you know, gives me a quicker uh, path to success. Right. Now, he started um, like kind of screwing you guys over on the back end. Right. Yeah. He, so he, was, he, he was getting he, shady towards you. Yeah. He'd be like, well, you know, the guy's not buying. And I was like, well, I mean, and that's, you know, we kept saying, just bring it to six bucks. Oh, that'll crash the economy. I don't care. You know, uh, and it's like, all right, well, you know, it sounds like, sounds like he's back in town. Like he'll buy some. Um, going through the emails and everything else, 
um, I think I was just selling to him mm. for, the, for the most part. Yeah, he was right? trying to undercut you and then move it again at a right. higher price. Yeah, but he didn't want to, you know, bring it all the way down to six, you know, but uh, he didn't want to pay me full price because right? Right. he felt like he was doing all the work. Um, and yeah, you know, he was doing a decent amount of the work, right? But at, at a certain point, it just became walk into the bazaar, look at the all the chrono, buy it all because who cares? I don't mm-hmm. care what the price is. I'm I'm barter. I'm just buying them all, mm-hmm. you know. And then sell bulk. You know, mm-hmm. I've got sixty more chrono today. Yep. You know, we'd buy a hundred chrono a day, easily, a couple yep. hundred, hundred each day, and we do it on like. Ah, man, we got cocky. Um, I think we only had one account per server. Mm-hmm. Everything would go through. And those accounts never, ever, ever got banned or suspended. The only account that got banned through this entire thing was the account that had the $2 billion at first. Because once they finally got off their asses and looked into it, they were like, oh, yeah, this is the one. And I think they felt like, oh, we caught them. We got them. You know, and that was it. Great job, Mission everybody. We got him. Yeah, so threw dead. the banner up. Woo, yeah, victory. You know, right. they, didn't, they didn't catch shit. How how long after that email. was it? Six months, maybe. So six months after you started, they they banned one account. No, no, no. Like six months after I ran out of plat. Ah, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So like <laughs> after eighteen it was months. Done. Yeah. 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 Wow. And you know the crazy thing is. There was a weird time like it 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 reached a fever pitch on Discord and on the forums at one point and I remember like I I spoke to some of the staff directly and I was like dude there is a fucking plat dupe like it's a person I know who's who's basically a friend of mine you know they the yeah. plat has already been duped I have seen more plat than you could possibly legitimately get and they just were like you know eventually I one of the I forget if Dreamweaver was still around or if it was someone else they're like yeah, we're looking into a plat dupe, and then they came back on the forums, and they're like, "Yeah, we don't really see any evidence of a plat dupe." Yeah, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I did my due diligence as like a a person in the community. You know what I mean? Try to try to yeah make make people who should know about it know about and, it. And you you were one of maybe like fifty that did that, right? Right, because it it wrecked the entirety. Every server was left touched by this. Yeah, just due to the perception. If there's a plat dupe out there, why isn't it on every server? It must be on every server. Mm-hmm. Therefore, now I'm charging double for Chrono. Right. Didn't matter if it's on one server or every server. Right. And I only had time. Sure, yeah, I could have gone out to those other servers and scooped up all their Chrono out of you know. I think some servers still are under two million. Well, were under two million. Um. But I don't think today that you can get a single chrono on the bazaar that isn't a TLP. Every other server is now over two million because <laughs> still the a the you know the the echoes you know the ripples in the pond from that dupe, and then the item dupe on the trade skill depots, uh, resulting in unlimited amount of plat, pretty much. Yeah. So like at this point. Those two things have ruined the economy on every single server for the rest of the game. Wow. Now, on Mischief, there was a second dupe, not not a plat dupe, but in Velius, there was someone who had a capability of duping items by like crashing a zone. Yeah. You would have to crash the zone. So it was really loud, but you yeah. could dupe items, right? You could do one bag at a time. I tried, I mentioned yep, this to one of my friends and they were like, that sounds r- ridiculous. I don't believe you. But I was like, no, dude, it's legit. <laughs> And, and and a lot of the hacks, right? Um, I heard about one that if you sent the packet for uh, eating food um, to the server, I uh, just kind of replayed that like with Wireshark or something else like that. Um, enough times, uh, it would like wind backwards uh, and then uh, give you all the stats of the food. Or you could, you know, uh, send the same packet, but for another slot, and it would give you that item again. Uh, or it would, you know, increase your your plat, you know, based off of that. Right. Like, there's all kinds of just weird interactions in the game throughout the years that are just like, 
that's how you did this. That's insane. Now that one specifically, you know, I know is, has been patched forever ago, mm. but that's one of the ones I, you know, people are like, Hey, how, how did this happen? I was like, ah, I think it's something about sending the eating food packet, you know? And then the people that, he, he would then also find out a lot about the person. They'd be like, no, that was passion such and such. I, I was using that back then. You're like, okay, mm. you're now a shady person. Right. You're, you're on now my checkbox for a black hat, you know, and like right. maybe I don't trust anything you hand me from now on until, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah. So that was kind of a red herring I would throw out was that yeah. packet. You know? I remember hearing that because, you know, I was always trying to figure out like how the, the platitude was done, like what was the methodology. And the food packet thing was was something multiple people were like, yeah, I heard the platitude was caused by like this, this sending the, the consuming food packet. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about here. I'm just like the local <laughs> idiot. So I, I never would have figured it out anyway. But yeah, um, I always people also have this tendency to think it was something that you could do like in game, like put something in a bag, close the bag 10 times, open it and parcel it. You know, they think it's that kind of shit. And I was like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure oh, it's yeah. like what, what people would colloquially call an active hack. Like it's something that you are yeah. doing, um, behind the scenes, so to speak. Yeah. And so like in the cybersecurity world, you got red teams and you know, stuff like that. Like this is at that level that you are decompiling something or, mm -hmm. or in the data stream, um, Every so often, like with the trade skill uh, depot, right? Every so often you get one that's an interaction that you can visually see. Um, but it's really the behind the scenes is what's actually doing it. Hmm. The big boy, you know, fixes and, and hacks and everything else like that. That's you're in the data stream, hmm. you know, and that's that's a simplistic, you know, phrase, right? Um, uh Beerus. Beerus was duping bags of, of gear, right? And he's so he handing me them. If let me correct me if I'm if I'm wrong in how I remember uh -huh. this. Beerus could dupe one full bag of items, but only correct. like one bag at a time. And uh to do so that was the one that had to crash his own somehow. Or yeah. is that yep. okay that so and this was in Velius. So he was like basically duping like shrouds of longevity and blue loot. loot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had a shroud from that. Uh, I gave him a couple items so that he could put it in, you know, and then be in the rotation, right? So then there's like a master bag, right, of like these are the top 10 items or, or whatever. I don't know what kind of bag he could do, whether it had to be tradable or he could do it with a no-trade bag. That was my next question. Uh, like, why wouldn't you just use a 40 slaughter, right? Yeah, and I'm not sure if he did, but it sounded like he did not. So I'm guessing it needed to be a tradable bag. Um, and I'm guessing it needed to be he had a trade window open as the server crashed and mm -hmm. both of them, uh, you know, as that zone crash and both of them still had the bag when it was done. So what was his method for crashing the zone? So I don't. Did he just go? He went to like some shitter zone like South Caledon or something, right? And where Probably. no one would be. Yeah. So back in the day um, there was, and, and, and this is me speculating, right? There was this remember when they put item links in yep okay so when they put item links in there was a two inch finger bone that dropped in carner's castle yep the, uh, for the monk the monk whistling fist line the the yep. shackle the tin shackle yeah and if you linked it in chat you know in oc or something that zone would crash hmm. and because they weren't escaping special characters mm. uh so it's real easy to you know go over into a zone check to see if the mob was up link that out there and it would just crash. And then yeah. you'd log back in, the zone would be back up, and you'd check again to see if the mob was up, right? Every time the zone came and back up, it would reset the pH or named check, right? You might have a name. Very mob. potentially, yeah. Yeah. So around that time, A, they fixed that. And I think that was at the same time um, that they changed how Vulak is spawned. Uh, you know, the, it's a ring. The, yeah. Right. Instead of this. Oh, he could spawn any time a uh, zone crashes or not. Hmm. So I found that one actually. That was that was me. I didn't put a bug report in, but I sent it to some friends mm -hmm. um, that were in a high level guild, and I was still you know lobby at the time. Um, and yeah, yeah, I, I know they played with it. So that kind of shenanigans and stuff is what I assume was happening. Toxin Do you remember on Cello when they added crash zones? When they yeah. added the spell name to to the logs that would appear in game, like oh, so, when yeah. you cast mm -hmm. a spell, it would say like "carrot 
spell name cast carrot. Yep. And like when a mob cast center, this was notorious. If you had your log file on and and, and like a mob cast the spell center, it would I I I heard that it was centering your log file, like all the text in it. Yep. And it yep, would lag yep. your computer really bad. So if you went into permafrost, it would just shut you down because all of them are yeah. like level eight clerics spamming center. Yeah. 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 And, and stuff like that, right? Uh Toxin um had a auto clicker for his uh Saru earring on cello. Uh hmm. is and, that how he, he crashed Dragon Acropolis and stuff on people? Yeah, yeah. He he would just, you know, click it ten thousand times in a you know millisecond or whatever, you know. Uh and as the server is trying to figure all that data out and it's tr- pushing it all out, especially if you're doing it next to mobs, mm-hmm. um, a, it gets a hundred percent aggro for life, right? Because doing an action near a mob that that mob can detect, uh, puts you on threat. Yeah. You nerfed now. 10, they nerfed, they nerfed that after it was abused yep. heavily in air with the J boots and the SOTI. Yep, yep, and so they fix all that, right? Yeah. Um, but that kind of stuff is so. I'm guessing it's a thing like that, right? Where mm-hmm. you're just doing a thing that just overloads the server. Um, so I think the crash is easy, and I, I bet you you could, you know, walk around because the game's so shitty. You can find some way to be like, oh wow, this this creates a bunch of lag. If I do this ten thousand times really quickly, well then, hey, that that zone's going down. Right. right. And MQ just becomes the means of generating it fast enough. Right. Can. Now, yeah. and, it's and important, for people to, keyboard. important for people to understand that you say this as a person who was for several months an officer in Amtrak, the, the guild <laughs> that yeah. the people in question were, were from. Right. Like Toxin was yeah. in Amtrak yeah. when he did that on Cello. If you yeah. watched previous episodes, we talked about it. Um, yeah. So you were an officer in there. So you have a little bit of the, the inside look at how that kind of shit happened. Yeah. And, and, some of it, right? Um, I don't know why, but but you know, when I joined that, I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this place up, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm gonna make this you know a little bit better. Uh, you know, I, not into great detail, but I thought I was getting one thing with faceless that I uh, was not, and so I was like, okay, well, you know, let me go to the other side. And then as long as I, you know, work on cleaning them up, you know, hey, that might that might be better. Um, they didn't do half the shit around me that they did around any of the rest of you. Mm-hmm. No, no excuse. It doesn't mean they weren't doing it. Um, I was very naive and in, and in, in just going, well, if they're not doing it around me, they're probably not doing it. No, mm-hmm. to do it all the time, right? Yeah. Um, and I didn't see everything that happened around me, but uh, it was a little bit better. So you know, hopefully yeah. that. Uh, you know, if St. Peter someday is like, all right, well, let's bring up your EverQuest logs. I'm like, no, bro. Like, mm-hmm. just send me to hell. Like, let's not, right. let's not say <laughs> right. these out loud because this is, this is awkward. You know, yeah. this is a bad look. But, um, but yeah, but some of that stuff, like, like that, right? I had no issues with Toxin, you know, or anyone else doing that kind of thing to keep aggro on a mob. The mobs there, it's not it's not breaking the encounter it's just he's not going to switch to somebody else you know right. we could we could do you know the pet trick or this trick in north tov and that's okay you know um well some people might think it's not but you know there's certain things that it's like yeah i'm playing with a really old game that's got a very terrible engine that's being coded at this point by what amounts to a startup you know that doesn't really know what they're doing anymore because all of their new coders are, are kids at this point. Yeah. Um, well, there's like there's like two tiers with the NTOV one. Sorry to digress here, but there's two oh, tiers no. of exploits you used to be able to do with the mage pets in, in, in TOV, right? Because the mobs are mm-hmm. perma-rooted. That's what opens it up. You could throw the two mage pets on and let them spam taunt and fight each other. And the mages would just stay out of summon range. Yeah. And they would build up a ton of threat. And then you go and you taunt off it and you fight the mob. But some people Plus realize... One, you're now the... Yeah, some people realize you could just keep them, you don't taunt it, and the mob basically doesn't fight. It won't use spells and AEs because the mages are out of range, and it won't summon oh. them if they're far enough away that they're totally out of summon range. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's that's breaking, right? Um, right? Keeping aggro, well, and I think probably most players, if you really sat them down and said, you know, explain those two scenarios, you'd be like, yeah, I'm okay with the first one. Right. You know, eh, maybe I'm okay with the second one. Probably not. You know, because it just reaches a certain point where 
I can't fix all the bugs, Mm -hmm. you know, and I just, I can't be responsible for something that, how many of the people do you, I mean, here I was, was a part of a lot of conversations about that and multiple guilds. I didn't even know the second one was an option. Yeah. We might've been doing the second one. I don't, I didn't yeah. see I it. Mean, you know, the thing, the thing with, with that is like with, with the infinite aggro, functionally infinite aggro that you generate with the clickies or the mage pets, it's not a big deal because guilds rarely have aggro issues anymore anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All it's changing is how early you can enter your burn, right? Realistically, yep. like, hey, we You're could burn some time. seconds faster. Because there's yeah. there's also like you could just roll in with a shadow knight and then taunt off of a, off of a harm touch and you're going to get functionally yeah. the same impact so it's very minor. Yeah. The second one is egregious because the mob no longer fights back, right? You're like, yeah, it's just a loot collection machine. Um, yeah. It's a guild so, hall yeah, dummy I, I with a chest. Yeah, yeah. So, but like so many people in a guild, they don't they don't even understand how the game works, right? A lot so of more bodies players, out there. Yeah, I. I, I will admit this, and I know a lot of people probably don't think I understand this. I'm a bad player. I'm a really bad EQ player, I think. I don't think I understand a lot of the mechanics sometimes, and I just fumbled my way through good enough, right? Um, and I would say, we'll call me middle of the road, right? I'm not quite bad, right? But Because I've played enough different classes at different times that I've picked up a few things, right? There are probably at least half the guild the entire guild um, that's below me that is just infinitely worse. And you're just carrying that body through the thing. They don't understand how that encounter works. Mm -hmm. There's probably raid leaders that that don't understand why that interaction works the way they do. You Mm -hmm. know, okay, well the mage is out of range. It's got a hundred percent aggro because it transfers from the pet. If it can't cast on them, it can't melee on them, it can't do anything because it's stuck trying to think about it. They just don't even understand, like, that mm-hmm. could be a concept, right? Right. And so, you know, there's so many players who are like, yeah, I'm not I'm not doing anything bad. And then you explain how what they're doing is, right? Because what, what's the live gameplay loop? Uh, new expansion comes out. You can sit in a raid. They'll do all the hunters for you. Mm-hmm. You don't know if that group's you know out there doing macro quests and just chilling. Um, they'll do all the quest lines, uh, you know, all the other achievements or whatever. And next thing you know, you're released to go level. You go hang out with a the buddy. They're like, hey, you get AFK in our group, right? Because you know we're doing. You don't realize that they're they're 100 AFK as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 then you're leveled up. Your AA's maxed, and you're you know you're raiding every night. And you don't realize that those seven berserkers over there are all bots, you know? And you're like, man, we've run a clean guild. What are you talking about? I never do any hacks, right? And you get holier than now on the forums. You don't realize you're carried by your entire team. The, in the background, they're doing all kinds of stuff. And they might be doing pretty passive stuff, but they might be full hacking. And you don't even know, you know, these people. Yeah. They just don't. And the game is so broken, I think, at this point that there isn't a person that isn't what was, what was the bullshit that the that America was pushing for a long time uh if you uh get heroin or something um you're supporting terrorism because that all comes from poppy fields in Afghanistan mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah you're like funding okay. the Taliban insurgents right. and shit right yeah we can we can walk it back there we can see a supply chain thing and we can be like mm, technically yeah right you could do the same thing in EQ. The game is so broken with hacks and uh, active and passive and automation that there's not a single person out there that is not benefiting from it. Mm-hmm. It's just not. Yeah. You know, and and when you have a, a plat dupe, you know, like we had and, and took advantage of, um, prices on things went down. Yeah, maybe the thing on Chrono and you know went up or whatever, but all the rest of the small level stuff you were just getting for nothing because it's like yeah, it's not even worth selling. You can just have it, you know. Mm-hmm. Like on a server like FE, forget about it, right? You know, you're just handing out stuff to newbies because who cares, you know? It's not um, worth trying to to sell it for like functionally right? no no platinum. Exactly. Yeah. And it's platinum is worthless anyways, you know. Yeah, and it was always kind of like the that, gold um, standard, basically. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So it's just, you know, the game, the game at this point, uh, it's in maintenance mode. Um, well, so you saw on the roadmap for this year, anti-cheat is one of the things. What do you, what do you <laughs> think as, as, a, as what we'll now call a notorious cheater? What do you okay. think? That's fine. Uh, I think they are just going to try and put more detection and they're going to do uh, X amount of scheduled suspensions right before a raid tier opens for the next phoned in two mission expansion um, that has cookie cutter loot that they couldn't even get right um, before launch. Right. Mm. So not very Uh, effective is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely worthless. So you know what? Like, Look at the rest of the game, right. right? And how effective it is. Type threes were not ready for launch. That's an integral part of the game. Yeah. Um, they brought them out and they had wrong lore groups like because they were cut and paste, you know? Uh, all kinds of different other pieces of the puzzle just weren't released with the launch. But the launch of this expansion was two missions. Yeah. Two missions. That's it. You know, they had to build raids and everything else. Two missions. So if you're not a raider, right? If you're one of the other 85% probably of the game, you know, here or there, you've got two missions that you then just grind out for the next year to get a uh, evolving item that drops so that you can then, all those achievements you've already unlocked, just automatically make it evolve. And then you just wait till the next year. You want to hear like something funny keep, kind of about that? Launch, right. Yeah, go for so it. So you talked about like them doing, the, they'll probably just do the the waves in line with new content releases. This last Mischief expansion dropped the day, like a day before the live raid tier was released for the next expansion. Mm-hmm. So they did a suspension wave the day of the mm-hmm. Mischief expansion. Like I, th- I think like 12 hours after Mischief uh, new expansion launched. I'm going to walk you back really quick We'll go all the way back to the buried sea and we'll say uh, faceless finish and then a competition. Okay, so faceless finished and then three hours later our competition our competition finished. Uh, mm-hmm. S- Secrets of Fade were they finished um, about forty hours after us. Sod they finished uh, day no they finished five hours after us. Uh, Underfoot they finished six or seven hours after us oh wait sorry two days they finished two days after us and underfoot house of thule the expansion with the suspension wave they finished 10 days after us <laughs> ah, seven, one, two, seven. Yeah. what happened yeah what happened <laughs> why did they yeah. why did it take them 10 extra days what happened yeah um it's funny how that works and i think um it's just because our expansion launch lined up with the live content release Yep, and I hundred uh, percent agree. I think a lot of the devs care more about live content, you know, than TLP. Like they didn't even know the sleeper was important or understand why, right? When you met with them, so obviously, <laughs> yeah. Um, but if they, I mean, it would almost it would almost fix the problem from a rating perspective if every time a TLP expansion came out, they timed it with a suspension wave. But then yeah. we know that suspensions only hit like ten percent of the people who are actively cheating, seemingly at random, right? It's like a shotgun blast. <laughs> And what's the point of a suspension? Yeah. Does anyone playing EQ not? Uh, well, let, let's let's change that. Does anyone using macro quest? And I've, I've I've sat in that Discord for a significant amount of time. Does anyone really think that what they're doing is a okay? No. Yeah. Right. They know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. And they ask about it all the time. Right. You, you, you get a whole bunch of idiots that are just like, uh, is this detectable? Uh, why, why do you care? Well, you know, if it gets detected, won't I get a ban or a suspension? Yeah. I mean, it's so like, like it's, you know, what you're doing is wrong. Right. It's a hundred percent. All of it is detectable and it is detected, but yep. rarely do people actually get suspended. 
Right. And so, and, and it's really, you know, like you said, uh, and we can go on for days with multiple different people, you know, uh, talking about, you know, dev corruption when it comes to treating their guilds or, you know, or just helping a guild out of, we'll clean out your cheaters for you, you know, mm-hmm. um, or we know the other guild cheats and so we'll clean out their cheaters, you know. Um, but, you know, and, and I've, I've listened to your, you know, drama quest about that, you know, Mm -hmm. cheating as well. It's like, yeah, you'll get one character suspended out of your 40 that are all doing automated raids. What's okay. Speed bump. Yep. Uh, I know I get three suspensions before they'll ban me unless it's egregious and they'll go straight to a ban. Right. But if I get a suspension, that's one of three, I guess that one sits on the bench for a little while. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it's also, it's not like three per lifetime. It's like three in a year, right? Uh, because I noticed they don't actually normally, publish anything. Normally they do two suspension waves. Um, like fully, oh, I think yeah. they're fully automated two suspension waves per calendar yeah. year. And it's three suspensions to be permabanned. Yeah. So it's set up so that no one ever gets permabanned. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just enough to show that they're doing the "quote unquote" right thing, right? Without when they don't even understand, yeah. But when they don't understand what the right thing is or not, you know. But but the game is broken, so like like how are you going to expect the players to care to not cheat, right? You know, uh, and like I said, you know, like I fully admit exactly what I'm doing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this whole thing was open kimono. Yeah, of co- you know, of course I wasn't talking about it during the time, right? You know, um, because, well, I'm not even sure they'd even shut it down, right? With the amount of reports and people, you know, coming forth with like, hey, this is irrefutable. This is happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't see it. You know, the fact yeah, that so- after... To ban me, yeah. What do you what do you think was up with that? Why why was the response a so late despite all the reports and so ineffective? They do not have an understanding of the technology that is running their systems. They don't have any kind of automated anything. They don't have any kind of logging. You could hack into their server probably right now, and I don't think it even ping them of like, hey, somebody's literally hacking into the server from outside. I don't think they have any kind of tool set internally that monitors because it's built on pretty ancient tech that that wasn't a thing back then. Hmm. No input validation concepts, no um, data security, no kind of um, logging of of anything. Um, I'm sure... Okay, I will amend this. They're probably have firewalls and security like that for outside inside hacks but inside the game nothing hmm. inside a, a, a authenticated data stream nothing yeah and what I mean, if the you other... try to get on like port 22 ssh or something yeah, yeah 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 that'll pop up the other thing with, with the logging piece is even if they're logging is is someone looking yeah are there, are there functional alerts set up? And like, right. do you understand what you're seeing when the alerts are triggered, I guess? Who, there's, a, there's a lot that, to unpack there. And the team is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Recently, Dark pa- or sorry, Daybreak has been selling IPs. Like they just sold, uh, what is that? Planet uh, side. Planet side, yeah. So I don't know. I hope they get better. Like, here's what I want. I want everyone who cheats or you know, anyone, anyone who's, who's been bad, I want them to get suspended. Even my friends, even me, when I when I toe the line, I want to be suspended yep. for it. Um, because once everyone plays, once everyone knows that that's the standard, then ninety nine percent of people play on the level playing field, and you they only do. have your really aberrant people who have like lack of impulse control, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Who are going to still cheat? And that's what I want to see. Right. Just do it. But when you go to a free to play model, it changes that. Yeah. significantly yeah. and i've been against it on many many games the minute you have a free-to-play model it means i can just spin up another account that will do 85 percent quality of a gold account mm-hmm. so who cares if they ban me yeah right so the the number one justification in the mq world is i'm running 
uh, five mercs. So why does it really matter? Hmm. I'm not really cheating. I just, you can't have five mercs in a group. I mean, people will rationalize anything. Oh, anything, anything yeah. for sure. Yeah. I've, I've, I've rationalized tons of things in my life. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. My eyes are open. I know exactly what I'm doing, but, you know, and I'm, I'm playing a different game than the game that they've sold. Yeah. I'm no longer doing it. Right. But, um, not kind of out of, I just don't want to play EverQuest anymore. It's just terrible. Right. Because of the, this company, um, the expansions they put out, they're fine. And they're interesting, right? And and there's new gimmicks and everything else. And yeah, it'd be fun. But the game that I'm playing is a single group, solo. Right. How do I automate it? And there's other games I can do that in. Yeah. Now, I like personally, I like a lot of what Jay Chan has done. If you've noticed, if you've just watched the news, Jay Chan has mm-hmm. done a tremendous amount of work on the back end of EverQuest to improve how how it functions like the move to 64 bit streamlining streamlining achievements like now when expansions come out they they launch cleanly remember how it used to be like rubber banding through yeah. zones on tlps and like you couldn't load into certain areas my experience Clicking in the last like, year forever. yeah it's like it's very smooth she has she has done a lot leading the initiative to improve kind of like the skeleton of whatever quest is um, I think the the last piece of the puzzle with what we can realistically ask from the company, given its size and age, is just c- somehow cleaning up the the cheating stuff. And if you do that, it's as good as it's going to get. I mean, nothing is going to release Kunark 2.0, like size expansions anymore, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, yeah, it's it just... They've got to move to a new engine and, that's, and that'll fix it you're still going to have active hacks. You're still going to have a whole bunch of other stuff, right? But, but it's not 25 years I, of, of knowledge of how to poke holes in right. it. Yeah. Now yeah, your friend, it's not who, flat databases, your, your hacker man background guy, do you mm-hmm. think he would ever reveal the exact methodology to the team so that they could like make sure that that is totally, you know what I mean? If he no longer has an incentive mm. to use it, would he ever be willing to share some of that with them to help them fix it? I don't know if he would do it even if it was something that could still happen. Right. Um, but I also don't think it's ever doable again. Right. With the move to 64 bit, there'll, mm-hmm. there'll be a different method. Right. Um, and somebody will find one. Right. And, and maybe, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it'll be him or another friend, you know, that's all in that space. Right. But also there's no incentive. Um, hmm. There's no bug bounty. You know, and that's how you get the hackers to be. You're familiar with bug bounties? Uh, yeah, I definitely get it. But do do game devs, like, do do gaming companies have bug bounties normally? Yeah, yeah, uh, quite often, yeah. Um, but even if, even if you're not getting paid right on a bounty, they're not open enough to have a dialogue, right? Yeah. And that comes back to the, you know, um, conversation about, you know, Holly being open and and you know willing to communicate if you would have had this mischief hack uh under her to email her this is the step-by-step process she cracked skulls until it got fixed you You think so i I, yeah i think she would and that's Um, mostly because 99 percent because you could initiate the earnest dialogue with her yeah and and she'd take it at face value, right? So yeah. during Cello, right, uh, Plane mm-hmm. of Storms, it was a big, big deal, right? Yeah. There were tens and dozens of picks. How? Nobody knew, right? Mm-hmm. My people were like, we didn't do we didn't do this. It must be a GM just wanting to have low drama, you know, spinning them up to everybody's benefit, and they don't want to announce it, so they don't have everybody rushing over here and mm-hmm. crashing it, right? It's probably delicate or whatever. Um so I went to Holly. I was like, "Hey, can you can you announce that like this is a new thing?" She's like, "I'll look into it." And she looked into it, and she's like, "I I I don't know what they what they did, but nobody can tell me how it's working." Hmm. And so I was like, "Okay, well, we're not hacking. Some something else is going on." No, we were we were totally hacking. You mm-hmm. know, I come to find out later, right? And they're like, "How could you do that? How could you talk to Holly?" I was like, "Well, we're innocent. Why wouldn't we?" That's how naive I was, right? Mm-hmm. That's how much, you know, well, I I also thought I understood the tech behind, you know, a lot of the active hacks. Yeah. Um, I didn't. They were doing something. I don't know what it was, but they were doing something. 
Um, and I didn't find that out until like a year plus later. I was like, oh, what an idiot, right? You know, I went to Holly, you know, had an honest conversation. Hey, this is what's going on. What can you do? And she's like, yeah, my, my GMs can't find anything. So, and then her, her reply was, so you guys must be doing something. Okay. You're fine. <laughs> I, I screenshot that email and I passed it around during that time frame. I bet everyone had a good laugh internally. Yeah. Everyone thought, you know, it was a doctor that I just, you know, on on your side, right? Yeah. They're like, yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. That email's legit, you know, and it was, but she didn't know what, was, you know, but the point was, is she put the effort in. Right. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, the, the plane of water. Um, skip. Oh, the going, going through the whole thing, like out of bounds. Yep. I, I taught apps or that. Mm -hmm. uh, at that lunch i was like all right you line up you you keep walking and then you get above it and you can walk all the way to uh Kornoff. he's like we'll fix that yeah you know like, what it's it's funny to think like with an hour if with like one eq dev and an hour and a laptop you could get so much fixed yeah this one and, time and they fixed um, that one. this one time like pip and one other dev were just in my twitch stream and I was like, oh, hey, what's up, guys? Like, let me show you, like, every exploit I could easily reproduce right now. <laughs> and it actually all got patched. Some people some people were mad yeah. at me. There was, like, you know, the taunt pull patch where you could, like, taunt and um, things would come with no yeah. social aggro? I showed them that. I was like, watch me, like, run into unrest with IVU, taunt the boss, and move before he can hit me, and then, like, train him to the entrance, and he'll come totally solo because my IVU yeah. never broke. And it got fixed in the next patch. Yep. Yeah. Uh, VT, they're like, yeah, that's that one is too difficult due to the way the zone files were built. Yeah, we don't VT's have a that technology mess. again. Yeah, there's like but holes I all over the place. And they're like, oh yeah, we would love to fix it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so so they they, they care here and there, mm -hmm. but you know they're limited, right? Uh, yep. Until you switch engines, uh, sixty four probably you know changed a decent amount of the hacks available, mm -hmm. right? Uh, DX11 probably brought new hacks back in, yeah. you know, because it's such a disaster. Uh, the new UI is broken. I would bet you that there are tricks and things for that. Um, yeah, they're, they're just hacking onto a, a client that's so old, you can't secure it. Yeah. I think run a long time ago, code. like over 10 years ago now, the source for EQ was leaked to Mule and those guys, right? A lot, lot of talk, a lot of talk, right? And, yeah. and and I think at this point, anything that you have attached to EQ Mule's name, consider it a lie. Really? You just put like a little asterisk next to it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's like, maybe, maybe it happened, but assume it did not. Mm. Um, that conversation where he supposedly made a deal, I have been told explicitly by several people that should know that, that conversation never happened. Really? Wow. Never happened. The whole like stay, keep MQ off of TLPs and then, and, you know, and truce. You're fine. Yeah. Yep. Didn't happen. I asked Holly about it. She's like, I don't remember having a meeting with him. Hmm. She's like, maybe, maybe he met with somebody else, right? Cause, cause you never know, right? And so as a right. leader, that's, you know, I, I don't use a lot of definitives unless I know for sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like I said, put an asterisk next to it, probably a lie. Yeah, the guy has been shady enough. Um, he built a pretty strong community, uh, you know, around and mostly clean, right? The people doing active hacks are aren't even an EQ mules group, right? Yeah, they're you know separate EQ bot, MMO bugs, you know those different people. Yeah, Fry runs MMO bugs. Good guy, great guy. You know, just has a different view on on what can be run. Mm -hmm. And some of that stuff they put in for emulator servers that allow it. Yeah, you know. And it's just and it's easy just, to reverse engineer it to work right. with, with the real thing. Yeah. You know, I've had a, a, a dev be really receptive, not in like getting rid of a hack, but I was like, hey, in this progression line, if you were to use a hack, I was like, let's imagine if you had a rogue and you just wanted to sneak to the end of every one of these things and then drop your task and then add other people, you could finish it. You know what I mean? And those other people wouldn't have to do yeah. anything. Or if you wanted to just warp and do it in one second, same the same principle, and they changed where the tasks were completed, so that yeah. are where the tasks locked because the tasks only locked at the very last step before the turn in to complete it. Right. So they're like now when you request it, 
you get a lockout, so you can't spam requests more to get a whole guild through with a warper, and yep. um, it locks on request. You get a lockout timer. So, yep. boom, you can't add people, and you can't just spam through them. Because I was worried that there was a group of people who were going to basically uh, knock out progression in like 20 minutes by having a, yeah. a small team of people who were willing to covertly warp, warp, then task add. You know, you know what I'm saying. Yep, yep I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. And they, I recently did that the other way um, to, to help out. So um, the new Dark Paw Tower thing, right? Mm -hmm. You had to like do this whole long thing to create this key. Uh, and then the key would get eaten, you know, when it's done, right? Mm. So you couldn't run, you know, multiples of your characters. But, like, it didn't make any sense, like, why you built the key and you turn the key and then the key disappears. It's like, that's not how keys work, right? Right, yeah, yeah. So, so then they realized, like, hey, that's kind of dumb. And so, you know, uh, or it was a bug, right? And so they fixed it. So now it's like, once you make the key, you've got the key, right? So you, yeah. it can be a little faster for your next group, not insanely faster, right? So they, they listen, you know. Um, just some of the biggest things are so, you know, uh, deep into the system. It's just hard to, yeah, hard to make sure that you can weed them out. Right. So when they make a comment, you know, make a thing on the roadmap of, you know, it, whatever it, it increased cheat detection or, or something like that, it, it, it's a platitude, right? It's just a, you know, a, a banal comment out there of just like, yeah, that's what we're working on. And, they're not not working on it. They just aren't going to be that successful. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the feeling I got. Now, uh, before we wrap up here, is there anything in the story of the Mischief Platinum dupe uh, that we miss? No, no. It's, I think we got most of it. It was a pretty interesting time, pretty quick. Uh, got in, got out. Uh, could have done way more. Mm -hmm. um, we just couldn't find buyers. Uh, and we just didn't really care, right? It yeah. was kind of like a. Um, I took took some of my family members out to a seven hundred dollar dinner. Yeah, you know, you know, I wasn't in it for the money. I was just in it for fun, right? Yeah. And it, just like you, like you wanted to know how the how the dupe. I'm always fascinated by how this or that um, evolves into a community type thing, right? Um, and it was very neat to see Eldoran, you know, and some of those other people like, oh, it's on this server. <laughs> no, it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, I got proof, you know, no, you don't, you know, uh, and seeing the psychology of it all, of how there wasn't a server not touched, yet we were on four servers. Right. And two of them were much later in the process. We're like, oh, yeah, we can just like go run over to the bazaar and scoop all those up real quick because they have a, you know, they're past, you know, uh, Looseland. Yeah. Looseland. Luckily. By the way. Loose. I yeah. asked, I actually, I asked Brad McQuaid before he died, not even joking. I asked him how you pronounce it. <laughs> and phonetically, he told me it is Luck Lynn. L U C K space Lynn, like your girlfriend Lynn. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. thank you. <laughs> We put that, I put that one in the AMA, uh, and I think we got like a 50 50 uh, from everyone that answered. So yeah. that, that made me happy. It'll always just be whatever you want. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, um, th there's, there's always those pronunciations. It's like, what? As long as you don't um, say Iskar, we can be friends. Okay. Yeah. People who it's say definitely Iskar, like, it's definitively Ixar, right? Like, come on now. Yeah. Or, or spell rogue like rouge. Oh, yeah. All right, Swinning, this and has been awesome. Joel. Thank you for coming on and, and helping us kind of illuminate a part of the EQ history that uh, was, was mysterious that people didn't know about even till today for a lot of folks. And um, I hope that no one is ever able to replicate what your three-man operation was able to do. Um, I'm glad you had fun with it for what it's worth. You know what I mean? But the effects it had are undeniable. And, and I hope that they are more vigilant in the future and able to stop these things as they occur you know what i mean so um that's that's my hope for everquest but i do thank you for coming on and uh i hope that the uh dark paw games snipers don't come take you out for revealing all this information i i hope they learn from it right yeah uh, yeah that's that's the real goal uh and and i wish there would have been a better thing back then to be like hey this is what i can do Mm -hmm. stop me you know right. and, and not not like a malicious but like like, like fix it yeah yeah because yeah. that would have been neat you know like hey this is what i've done this is how to replicate it 
once you verify that it's legit, 50 bucks, right? whatever, you know, uh, uh, you know, a free character boost, something, but they've got absolutely no way your name somewhere. Yeah, exactly. You know, or once, once I've, you know, done 20, you know, bugs, like, but they don't even listen to the bugs on their actual beta game. Yeah. So, yeah, that's Uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, you could do a whole episode on, you know, interactions with, with the staff and the goods and the bads right. and the pros and the cons there. But um, Swinag, thank you. And uh, thank you. With, with all that said, Swinag and Zade out. Drama Quest over. Thanks, folks. Bye.